Before we get into today's video, guys, I'm announcing the winner of our Shields Bait Caster, the Abu Garcia Black Max. I'm scrolling through comments on the video right now, and I have found fishing with Nick. This comment was made one week ago, so about when the video dropped, he said, if I win, I'm going to give it to my brother as his first bait caster. All right, Nick, I'm writing you back. You one man, hope he enjoys it. Give me a shout on Instagram and I will get this shipped your way. Let's get into today's video. What's going on, y'all? Welcome back. Today we are reviewing the new 10,000 fish headhunter. It's going to be completely epic. Let's get into it. Look at what just came on the market. We have a brand new soft plastic bluegill bait with a lot of fantastic features. Today's video is sponsored by Carl's Bait and Tackle, where you can pick these up if you're a Carl's Club member, but they're getting ready to go live for everybody very soon. So be on the lookout for your favorite color and size may go fast. Let's break these things out. You guys know bluegill is one of the most popular food items on the largemouth bass's menu. So they are going to be hitting these things right here. But what separates these from any other soft plastic bluegill bait on the market you might be asking i'm here to answer the questions right off the bat packaging is pretty cool it's almost like they work the packaging around the shape of the bait nice little touch very informative on the front as to the sizes the weights the features fully rigged swim bait ready to just tie on and go this is the smaller size right here i believe they're offered in six or seven different colors ranging from different shad colorations sunfish bluegill colors etc so you can really pick the right color for your waters based on what the bass are eating in your area now a soft plastic bluegill swim bait Ooh. i'm just going to be honest with you you'll probably find me fishing the larger size the majority of the time but i have a hunch this thing right here is going to be getting bit left and right and a lot of you might opt for that smaller size right draw in some more bites inside of that top gill you see that hook it is actually held in place by a magnet and it comes out whenever you hook up with a fish so then it drops down and retracts back in there look at you see that magnet pick it up one thing i've noticed with other single hook top fin kind of hidden baits in this genre is that these top fins are a little flimsy and sometimes it doesn't work through grass as good as you want it to. All it takes is one little push of that fin and then you're getting caught in this grass that you're not supposed to be getting snagged in. So we're going to see how effective it is. It's got a fat tail. This thing should be kicking. And even on this bottom fin here, it's got an indention towards the back, which I believe kind of pushes water out and helps get that tail kicking even further. Now, one thing to note too, is there is a weight, not in the nose, of this bait but almost along the bottom here and so you can kind of see there's this slight angle on the bottom so this bait should actually sit on the bottom like a feeding bluegill or panfish really going to get these bass fired up and irritated and spring when it comes time for bed season i have a feeling it's going to perform just as well kicking and swimming midwater calm you've got a lot of opportunity to fish this different ways the headhunter is a fully rigged swim bait built with a realistic dorsal fin that disguises the baits hook while preventing snags the magnetic hook harness system provides a more free range of motion when setting the hook while giving the fish less leverage to throw your bait so that's key I like the fact that the hook comes out of that top fin right there that is something completely different that I haven't seen before that's the smaller size let me show you guys the big one. this guy is still even though it's the larger size on the smaller end of the spectrum of what I throw a lot of times but one thing that's so great about this is it's not so tall a lot of these bluegill baits are so tall almost harder for those bass to eat this is a perfect size this is bite size I can't tell you how many fish you're gonna catch on this guy right here I'm honestly gonna go stock up on some more because I only got one of each size and color so watch it boom and an aggressive look it's really cool it's refreshing it's something different I like the look of this bait so this right here the color is the gizzard wizard I'm about ready to get this thing rigged up well we do have a little bit of a light drizzle going folks let me go ahead and tell you about the gear as far as the reel goes I'm less concerned about the reel as I am the rod and the line I want to make sure we're not snapping off and we're able to get the hook sets required for this bait and really feel out those bites but I would say something in the mid-range gear ratio something like a 7 2 to 1 is fantastic I am rocking the Shimano SLX XT today the rod though I'm throwing it on a muscle rod this is a Guggen Squad muscle rod 7.5 heavy extra fast so I'm gonna be slow reeling this guy along the bottom oftentimes or popping it and regardless I want that faster tip being able to feel out the bottom and also hammer down on these hook sets something like a seven and a half foot rod like this guy right here is gonna get you those further cast it's going to get you harder hook sets especially if you're setting the hook from a far distance and you're really going to be able to crank those fish out of the cover that you might be fishing this bait around now swim baits traditionally are going to have a lot better results fishing it in clear water with this rain who knows what our opportunity to actually catch a fish is today but stick around till the end we're going to actually give you our full first impressions and review once we're done fishing it as well as talk about something a little bit controversial and juicy at the end of today's episode stay for that now for line i would recommend about 14 to 20 pound fluorocarbon for these baits right here 
braid is going to float and also be a little bit more noticeable to these fish mono is going to float as well you want this bait to get down there in the strike zone so i'm going to be throwing it on fluorocarbon which is a little bit more dense it actually sinks in the water 14 to 20 pound because you do want something a little heavier when you're setting the hook on these big baits right here you go with something like 10 pound and i wouldn't be surprised if you break these things off and start burning through baits and that is not what you want chefy just got the big one rigged look at this i mean she's a beaut how you doing it's good thing let's get after him this oh is totally God. gonna do what the citizen oh it's gonna creep right through the stuff Dude, it feels different than you thought too i bet mm -hmm. yeah. real soft i gotta tell you guys i am curious if this hook is gonna stay down with that magnet like after casting it a lot because even though it is a sick innovation i'm curious how well it's gonna work right so let's test that out after a handful of casts we'll see if that hook comes up or not well the water's not as clear as we would like but that is uh, almost to be expected what's the depth like right here okay it's shallow right here, but I bet you it gets deep out a little further. I'm gonna try and get all the way over there to that. Look at that dude, casting across this whole daggum thing. I haven't even checked the action yet. I probably should bring it in and have a look at it, huh? Okay, I am feeling it creep through some stuff on the bottom. That's nice. Oh dude, it looks good. Yo. Oh, it the tail kicks. You guys can't even see it. The water's a little too murky. I've got it pretty close to the surface though. Oh my gosh, like if you're swimming this thing fast, yes please okay i'm gonna circle this place man first five to ten casts i'm not catching any grass the hook is staying down i am digging it so far let's try and catch a bass man sick that is a cast right there sometimes you overshoot it bring it on back i've been varying it up guys i've been going fast with it allowing it to kick the water temps are very cold though so what i'm doing at the moment is kind of slow rolling it trying to feel out the bottom i've also kind of been working it almost like a texas rig but not like not like a lot of pops like not like three pops on the bottom more of like a a, a raise of the rod tip like a smooth raise of the rod tip and then allowing that bait to just fall and kick on the way back down so it's not like it's popping along the bottom you could certainly do that but it's more of like a kick up and then let it fall nice and slow raise the rod tip it's kicking up now it's falling back down nice and slow so just one smooth raise of the rod tip and then i'm just kind of cranking in the slack so that if i do get a bite i feel it out starting to pick up in the rain department so let me cover some of the hot spots here anywhere i see brush or something that stands out as cover i'm gonna hit that real quick and then i might have to take a slight intermission if it's gonna start pouring on us but we'll see what happens all right nothing on it today almost as expected with the weather so we're gonna go ahead and hit you with that recap back at the house all right, we are back at the house and dried off. Whew, this is where things get juicy, man. We are gonna talk about our final first impressions and review of this bad boy right here. This magnetic keeper is pretty sick. Never seen it done before. It never popped out while I was fishing it, and yet it will pop out when you get the bite, allowing those fish to not use the weight of the bait quite as much and leveraging and shaking the hook genius it's also pretty cool for like just storing on your rods you've either got a hook keeper on your rod or maybe you just put it on your reel you can pop that sucker out and you can put it on there and it makes a difference because it doesn't scrunch up that top fin and kind of get that thing in the shape in which will happen meaning it keeps its proper form factor so that hook stays hidden and you're not going to be getting caught up in as much grass so i didn't fish the smaller size one i focused on the larger one today which is probably going to be the one i throw nine out of ten times but this guy right here is fantastic i'll probably end up tossing him out soon and i'll throw him on something more like a seven foot all purpose rod something like the Guggen squad go to versus this bigger guy on that muscle rod I love the kick the thing kicks that weight under here in the belly also keeps the fish swimming straight as you crank it pretty quickly but if you want to work it along the bottom it's gonna be nose down again looking like a feeding bait fish which is gonna be attractive the looks are great it's got a mean look like nothing I've ever seen some of the colors you'll see online are a little vibrant for me but some of these natural looking colors are just gonna absolutely get the job done I put my top three color choices over on an Instagram post about this guy so if you want to check out my favorite colors go ahead and give that a look the one drawback as I fished this thing for the first time was that because the eyelid is a little further back sometimes you'll get grass caught between the nose and the eyelid it's almost like a little V right here and grass will get caught on it and it kind of messes up the presentation there was a few instances where grass would get caught up right there and that doesn't help my confidence when fishing the bait but it just depends on what kind of grass you're working through I was kind of in the gunky stuff tonight I have a feeling in some healthy hydrilla it's really not gonna get caught up there there's so many different ways to work this thing midway through the water column just letting it fall down in some open water regardless give me another couple days to fish this thing and believe me it's gonna get bit maybe some better conditions not rain after after another day of rain it's just been terrible lately and now let's bring up something that I didn't even I didn't even think to myself until it was brought up on Instagram I made a post about this guy and how it's a newly released bait everyone said it's a knockoff it's a copy ripping off another company <sighs> 
Everyone wants to be the quickest one to say who these bait companies are ripping off these days. It's comical, dudes. I literally get hit up day in and day out by different companies, different individuals creating new jigs, creating new soft plastics, creature baits, and they want me to try out their baits and they look like everything else on the market. These baits look like everything else on the market. <laughs> look, do not take this as me standing up for the company for doing something wrong. I am trying to get the point across that everyone says the next bait that comes out from any company is copying another company. It's getting ridiculous. Here's the bait that this bait is copying. A Little bit different if you ask me. Profile of the bait, this is a tall, bluegill swim bait. Looks like a lot of other bluegill swim baits out there before it looks like this, but everyone says it's copying this. I think it's because the hook is hidden in the top fin on the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper, which is what this is here. That is true, but there's also like the hood gill out there. There's so many baits, I don't even know all these baits. There's so many baits that are soft bluegill swim baits with a hidden hook in the top fin. Now I don't know what else people are thinking. Here's here's my favorite color of the Dark Sleeper. Oh, by the way, our Mega Bass Dark, I love the Dark Sleeper. I didn't think this, was a Dark Sleeper knockoff. But while we're at it, let's do some comparing. The body on the Dark Sleeper is kind of fat, right? The tail is completely different, much smaller. Good kick from the Dark Sleeper as well. I think without a little innovation in the industry, everything's just gonna remain the same though. Other companies are now gonna play off of this bait and y'all are gonna say this bait's getting copied. They both get bit and I think the hook idea with the magnet here on top of the Headhunter is pretty slick. One thing I noticed after fishing the Dark Sleepers that may or may not happen on the Headhunter because this eyelid has moved up a little bit further is after you catch a couple fish on it, a lot of times, and we've glued this one back together, but a lot of times the weight in the nose of the Dark Sleeper gets pulled out and the nose gets totally, it just opens up and the bait essentially breaks and so you've gotta have some soft plastic glue. You can see this one's been like mended up a bunch of times to where the eyelet's like hardly even usable. Got it, oh! That was twice in a row. This thing's like broken. Dang it. I've never had such bad luck with this dark sleeper. Pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. You see the Got him. Fit it up. All right, there we go. Ah, first bass on the favorite combo, boys, and it's easily a two. Hey, top of the mouth hook set, thank goodness. I um, this one's torn up. It's probably caught five to 10 fish. The top fin's all completely shredded but uh, it's, that's because it's been catching fish. Let me tell you what, if you guys really wanna see a dark sleeper knockoff, let me show you this. I just hopped on Amazon real quick, scroll down here, and after like the first five results of Mega Bass dark sleeper, then you've got this Werjo dark sleeper. That looks like a knockoff to me. That's like a legitimate knockoff. Uh, <laughs> you have the True Send. Oh, it's a bestseller. True Send Fishing Lures Bass Soft Swim Baits Pre-Rigged Ultra Sharp Hook. It looks just like a dark sleeper to me. So the point is, so all in all, my opinion, two entirely different baits. You guys provide your take down in the comments. I just think it's funny how every new bait that comes out from every company is a copy of somebody else's. You've now seen it in action. Let us know where you want to see us fish this guy because we are going to be featuring it in a lot of videos coming up soon. And trust me, when springtime hits, you better hope you have a couple of these in your tackle bag. With that being said, go ahead and check them out over at Carl's Bait and Tackle. And I can't thank them enough for sponsoring today's video and supporting our channel. They've been longtime supporters and we appreciate it. Also, thank you to all of you guys, the subscribers and folks watching till the end. We will catch you on the next episode. Have a good one, y'all. Peace. <gasps>